Hi, everybody. Hi, welcome to Table Talk. And uh, we're real excited to start seeing you tonight. So grab a cup of coffee or a tea and uh, jump online. We've got some really, really special guests with us tonight. We're really looking forward to uh, introducing them. They've, they've, they're, I mean, they're not just local, are they? Yeah. I mean, they're, they're international. International global communicators yeah. and that's going to be <laughs> awesome so let's use joining us online well ian schools is watching he stopped building his house kate towers from blackpool hi yeah. kate sal harrison is watching uh, oh happy birthday to jim i think it's jim's birthday today yeah. as well happy birthday hi, jim susie. susie well she's paid to watch she's a pastor <laughs> isn't she so you better be watching susie i said harris will sack you and <laughs> keith's watching hi keith meg ellison from gate said why I man from that north east man like that? Listen, just in case you're wondering why on uh, table talk I'm wearing a hat, it's because my hair is absolutely yeah. horrendous. Um, it's I, I look like I'm homeless. People are taking offerings in the street for me. It's really, really ridiculous. <laughs> so, oh, Frida Ball is watching. Um, just something to uh, Rich Leadon. Come on, jump online, get a brew. Paul Reed is jumping on as well. Uh, just to my wingman, Luke. Luke, can you get me and Georgina on the screen with Kevin Maria? It's live, but it's not on my um, it's not on my iMac. That would be great. Just Steve Crossley's jumping on. The fireman Margaret Pepper. <laughs> Carolyn's on. Carolyn's telling me to take my cap off. Look, if I take my cap off, <laughs> hair will fall all over my face. I look like. I look like somebody from, um, I don't know, from the hippie movement in the 60s. <laughs> so I'm not taking my cap off. Get a shave. So Naomi Bainbridge is on. Hi, Naomi, Let's Fiona. Go. Well, the numbers are building because, I mean, it's a big night, George, isn't it? It's a massive night. No expense spared. Oh, no. Honestly, this has cost <laughs> thousands and thousands of pounds. Yeah. This is going to be absolutely huge. So there they are, Kevin and Maria. They've arrived on Table Talk. Hey, great to see you, Kev. Great to see you, Maria. How are you doing? Oh, we're doing really well. We're doing really good. It's good to see you guys. So it's been a long time. good to see you. We yeah. miss you. We miss all of you. Thank you so much. Listen, tell us, without depressing us, because we've had good weather here, tell us what the weather's like in Orlando. So Orlando today is blue skies. Little, There's a little bit of clouds right now, but normally it's it's blue skies. It's, it's about 34 degrees Celsius um, um, on our side. Oh, brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. Well, listen, we're going to um, spend some time with you. We've got some real deep, deep heart-searching questions for you um, in a minute, but we'll, we'll, we'll go easy on you uh, for the first few minutes. Um, first few minutes is this. So can you remember, this is a quiz to see how important I am to you. <laughs> <laughs> can you remember the first time we met and where we were? I do, yes. We were at the Empower Conference, um, and I believe I met you in the green room. Okay. Really Do you remember to... that? <laughs> I remember <laughs> wrong. <laughs> you came up. You came up to me and said, um, "Hi, I'm Kevin, and I'm the best preacher in the world. Can I come to England?" And I said, "Kevin, be a bit more humble. That's that's bad." No, listen. Um, yeah, we met all those years ago uh, in the green room. I think it was in the King's Theatre in Portsmouth, wasn't it? Um, I was speaking. The um... uh, no, not. I don't think not yet. I think you were still. The first Empower I went to was in the, the gym still. All right. And that was in the gym, so it was the year before. Yeah. Wow, that's brilliant. Right. Well, listen, it's fab to have you guys on. I know you've been to King's. I think Kevin's been twice. You've only been once, Maria. Kevin. Ah, I've been twice. You've been twice. Yeah. So, Kevin, you've been three times. So, Kevin's had a three a three portion where you've only had a double portion, Maria. Yeah, he had the portion where you took him sightseeing oh, around Bolton. No, don't do that. <laughs> And, oh. No, you you showed me that great aquarium. You showed me that great aquarium. Oh, that is. And it, we, we took we, him oh, to the Bolton God. Aquarium. And the year after, we went to Chicago to see you, you guys. And I'll never forget, we were on an open top bus tour or something. Oh, shocking! And we went past the world's largest aquarium, aquarium <laughs> that in Chicago, where you used to live. I can't, I can't <laughs> believe it. Kevin arrived. He was a bit jet lagged. I said, "Do you want to see Bolton?" And he said, "Yeah," because he's nice. I mean, I just said, "No, get me to the hotel." Well, Kevin <laughs> said, "Yeah." So I'm, I'm, I'm walking through Bolton. Wood. That's a kebab shop. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's a charity shop. That's an empty shop waiting for refurbishment. And then I thought, there's got to be something good in Bold Town Centre. So I took him to the aquarium, and there was four goldfish tanks with dead fish on top. <laughs> uh, that's what Adam's saying, don't forget you showed in Home Bargains. Yeah, and I took him to Home Bargains. And if you've not been to Home Bargains, you, you, if you've not been to Home Bargains, you've never really lived. You've not had the full boat experience. People are saying, Kevin, um, that they love it when we dressed up. I think we need to explain that. Yeah. The pictures where we dressed you up. Should, we should find more of those photos. We've yeah, got to find them and spread the, yeah, share the wealth we'll, again. We'll share them on our pages again, for sure. That was so yeah. fun. So, yeah. So fun. Yeah. It was. Okay, let's get some questions, shall we? We haven't. We haven't paid ten thousand dollars to get them on just to ask them. <laughs> <laughs> have <we>? Really? <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Gee, thanks. <laughs> okay, so let's do some quick fire ones. These are just to find out a little bit about you. So you, we're going to give you two options, and you've got to give us one. There's no thinking about it. It's got to be a straight answer. Both. Both. Well, you just throw yeah. something out there. Right. Tea, nervous. Tea, coffee, 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 coffee. Europe or Caribbean. Europe, I'll go Europe. Uh, I don't want to answer that one because I want them both really bad. I think I just want to travel right now anywhere. I'll go anywhere right now. <laughs> Home bargain. Both an aquarium. Both an aquarium. Um, <laughs> yes. Dog, cat. Dog. Dog or what? Cat. Dog. Dog. Phone call, text. Text. <laughs> text. Netflix or cinema? Cinema. Yeah, movie. Yeah. Facebook, Instagram. Facebook. Facebook. Music or podcast when you're walking or running? Oh, that's tough. I do. It depends on the day. I do both. That's that's a tough yeah. one. I do audibles. Audible. That wasn't an that, listen, listen, the idea of this game, let me explain to my American friend. Is, we're, we're not asking you your opinion for the whole world. We're saying, you've got two choices. You've got to pick one. You know, oh, man, we're American. We had one. We had one. <laughs> okay, I'm going to do a couple now. Uh, Coke or Pepsi? Coke. Coke. Oh. Uh, morning or late night? Late night. Morning. Oh, yeah. Um, rain or snow? Rain. <laughs> Rain. No more snow. I'm done. I'm over you it. You moved away from there. Okay, steak or chicken? Steak. Now listen, this one, this is the last one we're going to do, but it, in many ways it's the most significant. The answer to this one could get you in a lot of trouble, okay? <laughs> with me. Might get you in a lot of trouble with me. Okay, so think about this, and, and probably, you, even if it's not true, you need to lie. Okay, <laughs> okay even if not uh, Bolton or Manchester? Oh, Bolton. Bolton. Oh, awesome. Listen, you've passed the test. You're a, you're a British citizen. We love you. We love you. Okay, let's get down to some serious stuff. Um, we've been friends for several years now, and uh, we've been over a couple of times to Chicago when you were there. And uh, just tell us about how you guys got together and how you ended up in ministry together in Chicago. It's been a while since somebody asked us this question. Yeah. You want to share? I want to talk about how we got together. Just how we got together. So we we were high school sweethearts. So uh, cool. so we so we met in high school. We actually met in a play, a drama presentation that our high school was doing. And um, he was. It was West Side Story. I don't know if you're familiar with that oh. that musical. And there's a Maria in West Side Story. I know, but I wasn't Maria. Oh. I was I was just a Puerto Rican girl. Um, but he was he was Bernardo. He's Bernardo, the head of the Puerto Rican gang. So my mom was the high school Spanish teacher at the time. And um, so she came in to help us kind of have the correct accent and language. And he just decided to befriend my mom. A lot. <laughs> what, he, he hit on you I, had, I had noticed her in the chorus line in the back. She was like a, 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 just, in the dance dancing. routines and things. And I noticed how how much better of a dancer she was than all the other girls. Like the other girls were kind of clunky and everything. And she just had this elegance and grace about her, which I thought was super attractive. 
And so I was, I fit when her mom came in, I was like, I want to know the mom because I'm going to make a move on the daughter. <laughs> so I'm going to make sure I get to know mom ahead of time. Oh, <laughs> and he did. So he asked me to um, be junior, senior, our prom. Um, and I was a ninth grader. So, and he was an 11th grader and um, that was our first date and we just started dating. And so, yeah, the rest is it. We dated for about four and a half years. Um, got married after my first year at university, and I was 19. He was 20, almost 21, almost 21. Wow. and um, it's been 21 years. Yeah, and it gets better and better. We love being married. So we, uh, we were, I was her, Maria's first dating relationship, marriage, but obviously marriage. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had any others. <laughs> and then uh, I didn't really date all that much. You know, before I was, we were super young. So we've just been together our whole lives, and um, and then going into ministry, you asked about ministry, uh, right out of high school, I started working for a large church in Illinois. Um, she went away to university. We got married after her first year of university uh, and started pastoring a youth group in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And then we were called back by that large church to go back to our hometown and join the, the in staff Illinois. in Illinois and join, join the large staff of the church there. And then we were married about six, seven years at that point. And then they asked us if we'd consider taking a small church over that was struggling um, out in the field in Roscoe. Actually, the story there was I had been sensing church planting in our heart, and I made an appointment with the senior pastor of the large church we work for about exploring the idea of church planting. And I was to meet with him on a Sunday, or a Monday, or, sorry, no, or Wednesday. 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 And that <laughs> Sunday before uh, the meeting, we were driving past this little field a little soybean field with a very little church small church in it that had been there for 20 years and it's right on the way to her parents house and so we had passed that church dozens of times and it had never grown the lights were always off there was no parking lot there were never cars there and i'd never made a comment about that church in the seven years we had lived there but that night driving by that sunday night i made a comment out of nowhere i just looked at that church and i said it's not right that that little church sits there year after year God needs to do something in that church. Well, three days later, my appointment with my senior pastor uh, is on the calendar. So I show up, I say, what's the deal with church planting? And then all of a sudden he starts speaking in tongues saying God's talking to him about something. And he's like, hey, there's a little church out in the middle of this town called Roscoe. Uh, would you ever consider pastoring that? And I said, I said, well, I know exactly where that is. We just drove by it on Sunday. And I made a comment out of my mouth that God needs to do yeah. something in that church. It's not right wow. that it sits there. And so we learned a lesson that day that never say God needs to do something somewhere unless you're willing to be the solution to that problem. <laughs> right. So three days later, we were being offered that very church. And so wow. fast forward a month later, we candidated the church. They voted us in. There was 18 people there. Uh, we were elected unanimously. We took about a month to pray and just rest. And then a month later, we started. So August was our initial start date, um, 2003 or seven. I don't know. 2003, yeah, I, I think. Know. And um, yeah, it, from there it grew. We were there 16 years. Wow. And then yeah, up, up, until, up until this last this uh, last June, we were with you guys. Uh, we're we're going to come on to the future. We're going to come okay, on to the future. We are. We're still in Chicago. Don't rush it. Don't rush the story. <laughs> Listen, true. a lot of a lot of people on Facebook haven't got past the, the fact that you you hit on Maria's mum before you. <laughs> hit on there's, there's a there's a lot of there's a lot of activity on Facebook saying we didn't think Kevin was like that. We thought he was holy. But there's a manipulative side of you, Kevin. I've seen over it's the not years. It's manipulation. It's called strategy. It's not manipulation. <laughs> it's a totally different strategy. word. Strategy. Kevin, could you sing yeah. Maria? I've just met a girl called Maria. No, but at our wedding, at our wedding, his mom at at our kiss in our ceremony, his mom had the clip um where he song. where he says, I just kissed a girl named Maria. As soon as we kissed, it came blaring over the loudspeakers. I just kissed a girl named Maria. So she did have some fun with that. Okay, and you Maria, you could sing, I feel pretty. Oh, so <laughs> okay, you don't want to do that. Okay, it's a bit worrying. We'll spare you. The Derek knows all the songs out of West I'm impressed. I'm impressed. Yes, yeah. they're going to get it now. <laughs> so listen, let's move on from the. So um, we've established so far. You, 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 you're a failure in the acting department, and so you've got into ministry. 
Yes. That's basically the, that's, the, that's, the that's short of the story, the yeah. So just tell us about, um, I mean, I visited a few times the church um, in, in Chicago, in Illinois, where you were. And um, it was a brilliant church. She did a great job. Just tell us of some of the things, because um, you arrived there, there was 18 people. It was a small small mindset mm-hmm. place. And uh, when you left, there was maybe a couple of thousand people. You had your own yeah. facility. You just put a big gymnasium. You had a college. Um, you had a nursery. It, it, You know, when I came, it looked, it looked great. It looked like, wow. I mean... If you don't, if you've never been to Kevin's church, from when you drive yeah. past it, it looks like an igloo because it's, a, <laughs> it's like a, an igloo because it's, it's an old military too. building. But just tell us a bit about a few things that you guys learned during those sixteen productive years in Illinois. Good. No, go first. Yeah, um, some of the things that we learned when it came, comes to leadership or it comes to like the. Life, Christianity, or, or life, or what? Do you, is there a specific area you're thinking? Just leadership in the church. Um, I think one of the things I learned was how, if you're at a church long enough, it really does change. It's not the same, and, and sometimes people want to keep a church in the same um, context. They think, well, we showed up in a certain season, and, and something was working really well on that season. And if you're not careful, you think that that season is is the church forever and there are times and seasons for everything and that and certain things have a an emphasis at one season and then it goes to another emphasis another emphasis and part of that's just doing doing journey together and doing life together and uh, that's giving your your pastor a chance to change and grow because if you want your pastor to stay the same because you liked him in a certain season and he tries new things or he has new ideas if you limit that then you're you're actually going to I think limit your own future and progress. So it's not just the pastor, but then the pastor, the same thing with the staff. And sometimes we're, we're fighting to keep everything the same because we feel safe in familiarity, but we don't realize that's what we're doing. We're, in doing so, we're giving up the potential things that God wants to keep creating, you know? And so with our mouth, we say, we want God's best. We want God to create new things um, and, and stretch us. But then when it happens, we get frustrated because we want things to stay the same because we feel safe. And so it's just these, this balance of how things change and and just because methods change or certain seasons change doesn't mean that your heart for God has changed. Doesn't mean that mm-hmm. you, you know you're you're changing mission. You're just maybe thinking of new methods and opportunities. So that concept of constantly changing, um, but yet not feeling like you're compromising anything or letting people have space to change. Those kinds of things were I think really big revelations to me. Thank you. I think if you're honest, you can look at 16 years and say, well, gosh, there's so many life lessons along each path. Um, you know, each season, there was something new. I mean, we lived a lot of life. We essentially grew up um, in the church. We had all of our, our children, you know, were born and mostly raised during that time. So there was just a lot of personal growth. I mean, you just grow as a mom. We had, you know, twins, one with special needs. We had three children under the age of 18 months at one time. So there's just a lot of, I think, personal growth that happened along that season, just because our kids were little and raising them and doing ministry. But I think lessons, um, so many, um, so many, one, even along the lines of what he said, is that you just, you, you just always have to keep growing. You always have to, because times and seasons change, but you can't get stagnant in who you are personally in your relationship with the Lord. God always has more. And there's more inside each of us than we know. And there's more that he wants to do inside the church. There's more that he wants to do inside people. And that requires us to continually grow, to to develop the seeds that he's planted inside of us. And one of the things that I've found that I'm so grateful that I, I, I did, but I'm working to continue to do is to continue to guard my heart um, and to stay um, at a place of authenticity with people and with God, because it's really easy being in ministry or just in life in general. You can start to put up walls. You can start to put up facades. You can start to, because for whatever reason, whether you're trying to protect yourself or you're trying to all kinds of things, but just fighting to be authentic to be trusting to keep your heart pure to love people with his love to just do it just to be real that and authentic because then ultimately you can reach more people that way um and life's more fun to live it's more fun 
Yeah, but just constantly, if you can just keep check on, on your heart yeah. in the midst of it, um, then you're going to be able to hear him better when he says to move in it and whatever he asks you to do. Um, you can just hear that more clearly as well when you're in that place. So um, mm -hmm. I'm grateful. I, one of the things that, and it's not tuning our own horn, but one of the things that I feel like that we started out doing well um, is just being real and authentic and genuine, um, still leading, but leading from that place. And if I could, you know, just looking back, I just want to, you just want to protect your heart. You know, the Bible talks about guarding your heart and making sure that you stay that way because you can be used. You can, you can yeah. love people. You can, God can use you. Wow. Love that. Yeah, that's superb. I remember um, having some great times with you guys in, in Chicago. Um, usually when we when we ministered on the Sunday, we went down into Chicago, into the city, and we went um, yeah. watching the Bulls. I've recently, well, yeah. in lockdown, I've been watching The Last Dance, which is all about Chicago Bulls. Yeah. And uh, while I've been seeing bits of the city, we said, I've been there! I've been there! <laughs> and stuff like that. So... Uh, We've had some great memories of Chicago. You guys did a phenomenal job taking a church from 18 people to the one that I preached in that uh, a year before you left. I mean, that was yeah. um, awesome. Is overused, but I think it's it's probably fits what you did there. So that's not the end of the story. So tell us about how on earth you've got from being in Chicago, happy church of a couple of thousand people. Great city, everything happening. Derek's your friend from England. <laughs> you, you've been, you've, you've spoken at Kings in Bolton. That's you know as good as it gets in ministry. And uh, how did you get from there to twelve months later? Yeah. You're we're speaking to you from Orlando. I I know a little bit about that journey, but you've got to tell people because it is so good. Yeah. Well, I think you hit it. I mean, we hit the the epitome of ministry by going to Bolton. And so at that point, you know, you're like, God, we have to rethink what's next. We've hit it all by 40, <laughs> 42 years old. We've done it all. So um, I had a dream. We had started sensing inside that something was changing, but we thought it just meant um, try harder, work harder where we were. And God gave me a dream. Well, because we were loyal, you know, we were just. Yeah, we, we're, we're not we're committed. We don't jump around. Uh -uh. We're, we're committed people. Um and in that dream, I don't have a lot of dreams that I would say are prophetic dreams. But this was a dream that when I woke up, I, I knew it was God. And I said, Maria, I just, the Lord just spoke to me in a dream. And he showed me a picture of a church, a physical building, um, a bunch of glass on the outside. It was very tall, like three stories tall. Um, you walked in the doors, you go up these escalators, and you enter the sanctuary from the second floor. You enter the sanctuary, there's all these individual like chairs, like classroom chairs, and the walls were like light wood and uh, a lar very large stage. And I heard the Lord in that dream speak something very specific to me. But what I remembered more than anything was the, the passion and the enthusiasm to preach the word. Like I, it was like I was a kid again, starting ministry all over again. And there was just this enthusiasm, like, I want to preach the word. And, you know, one thing when you're, when you've been pastoring for 16 years in the same place, you, you do have passion, you do have love. Um, but it, 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 something was different about this. It, it, it was a different kind of passion. It was just this natural fire. I felt it from the bottom of my feet to the top of my head kind of passion. And I woke up and that was the thing that stood with me the most. I said, Maria, um, I said, I had this dream. God told me to, to, to lay the church down and to go after this dream. We didn't know what it and We didn't was. know what it meant. I said, but what I felt about ministry and about preaching the word again, I said, I haven't felt like that in years. I said, even for the sake of that, I'm willing to do this. And uh, through a, a number of situations, uh, we thought that was the dream was symbolic, um, that the escalators meant going to another level. And we thought that the big church <laughs> meant... Yeah. And like, you know, scope and size of influence and impact. There were some airplanes in the dream, you know, different things. Well, through a series of circumstances, we found... <laughs> after. After all this. After we had resigned. After we resigned and all these things, we we realized that there, this was an actual place. And it wasn't like we had to look around. The one person I reached out to to let them know that I was thinking about transition, we started having conversation. And then from that conversation, someone said, oh... That's the pastor that has the church with the escalators in it. And I'm like, excuse me? 
I didn't even know there was a church with escalators. I, I didn't know churches had escalators. And I've never been into a church in my life where you entered the sanctuary from the second floor. So I, I get online. We look at this church. We the, the outside of it's the exact picture that was in my dream. It's the tall glass building. It has the escalators. The sanctuary has the individual chairs, the lightwood walls. It, it, it was like I was in the spirit in my dream standing in the middle of a real place. Mm-hmm. And that place happened to be in Orlando, Florida. And so I had offers to go to states to pastor uh, Louisiana, uh, Buffalo, um, New York, and then, but it wasn't the dream. Uh, large sanctuaries, all kinds of things, but I, I couldn't get away from the dream. So there wasn't a job. There was There's not no, a, there was no job offer no or job. anything. So we just made a commitment to turn down all the other churches and just follow follow God on this. And so I flew down, we flew down to Orlando. I met with the pastor of that church and I just let him know, the Lord told me, and I I did have a friendship with him from Illinois from years ago. I I told him, the Lord told me, showed me a dream of your church and told me that I'm supposed to come here, um, that you're our next step just to be here. So we're going to come free of charge. I'm not asking for a position. I'm not asking um, for anything. Um, we'll come and serve and, and we'll live off Maria's income with her health coaching business and we'll just volunteer and serve. Um, he was like, well, that's awesome. Come on in. I know your, your, your story. So I know you're a quality leader. Come volunteer. There's not a position here. There's no staff position here. So we came in August, um, in December, um, he asked a, a transition happened on his team and he asked me to consider being the executive pastor of the church of ministries. And so in January, I started working for them. And what I do basically is I coach all of their pastoral teams uh, in strategy and in vision and things like that. And so that's where we are currently in regards to that church that God had showed us in the journey. Yeah. But along, and along the way, and I'm sure you have another question, but there have been so many amazing things that came out of that. Even when we, you know, as a mom, I think about the kids and I think about, you know, yeah. Lord, their schools and things. And um, what was interesting is when we found out Orlando, I started researching, you know, for Isaiah, our little, he's not so little anymore, he's 15, he has cerebral palsy, special needs. And so I started looking, I wanted to make sure that, you know, him and the other three children had the right fit. Well, we've come to find out there's a school um, in Orlando, which in Orlando, the town that the, the, the village or whatever that the church is in is called Winter Park. So in Orlando, there's a school uh, just for kids with cerebral palsy, there's only one in the U.S. like it, and it happens to be in Winter Park. <laughs> so, well, and in my dream, one of the things I did see in my dream was Isaiah. We have four children, but specifically, I saw Isaiah in my dream, and he was thriving and prospering. Thriving. Yeah. And so he's been at that school, and it has been, without going into detail, an absolute game changer for him oh. physically and mentally since being here. So, just among other things, the Lord really. You know, when you obey the Lord, like he really worked out all the things that concerned us and the kids, their school year, well, amidst a pandemic, right? But the yeah. Lord had him in the right schools and he just really has confirmed. It's not been easy, but he's really put the pieces together down to our, even our home. Wow. I, I mean, what I don't understand about, I, I'm trying to understand in all this is you pray to God and get a vision for Orlando, Florida, 20 minutes from Disneyland. <laughs> I pray and get a vision of Blackpool. <laughs> and 20 minutes from Home Bargains. So I, I don't know if you're more holy than me, or God knows I can take the inner city. I don't know what that is. I don't He'd know. probably what. trust you more. He he probably, I, I'd he like does. to hear. But what a great story. Yeah, and uh, right. to move your whole family on... Um, Knowing that there's no guarantees of anything at the other end, mm-hmm. that's 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 truly inspiring and faith and uh, good on you. So you've been in, you've been in Orlando um, now just about a year, is that right? Coming up, yeah, in August, August, August of the year. Okay, just tell us how you find it, Orlando. Um, you know the sunny weather, twenty four seven, and have you been to Disneyland yet? That's what we all want to know. <laughs> oh yes. yes, and yes, yes, yeah. Go ahead. So it's sunny. It's sunny here probably 90% of the time. So it's when it does rain, it'll rain for like two hours and it's gone. It's gone. 
and this is the first winter that I have not been cold, so I really am liking you're, the weather. You're really, you're not sad about the weather. And even being shut in with being quarantined, I mean, if I could take you around our neighborhood, it's like being quarantined in Hawaii, you know, it's like not, it's, it's, it, you're like, oh man, I have to stay home <laughs> by the lake, you know, <laughs> by the palm trees and stuff, you know. It's not too bad yeah. at all. And yes, we have been to Disney World, so we got our annual passes um, in December. So obviously, Disney World is closed right now, but um, but yes, yeah. we, we probably went eight times in about a month or <laughs> month and a half. Yeah, and yeah. so we're proud owners. We've yeah. got like the little car stickers that say that we're Disney pass holders. We're uh, yeah, we'll and it'll be, it's fun. We always dreamed of this, but when we one night. Once or twice, we went on a date, and rather than going to a restaurant, we just decided to go to Disney World, just the two of us, to go to dinner, just for dinner, because you don't have to, you don't have to pay anything when you have the annual pass. So, Sorry. Epcot, if you know anything about Epcot, it's the countries of the world. So it's like Japan, yeah. Germany, Italy, France. UK is there. England's yeah, there. England's there. Yeah, England's you get there. fish and chips. Yeah. Yep. Um, so we, we always think of you when we walk through. Yeah. <laughs> so we said, hey, let's go to. Let's go to Italy for dinner, and you, you know, rather than Italian restaurant, you have this whole Italian experience, like the, yeah. the, the workers are from Italy, the architecture is from Italy, the food, or you can go to France, and there's the Eiffel Tower sitting there, you know. So it's just kind of a fun, fun way to spend a date night. So uh, one of these days we have to get you out here. You guys here. come out here, we'll take you. Date to the night in Disneyland. Where do we go for our date nights? <laughs> Beach. <laughs> we go to Pizza Hut, I think. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that's that's uh, that's absolutely brilliant. You guys being in yeah. in, uh, in in uh, Florida and Orlando. And one of the things I've, I know about you guys, more specifically in your ministry, is Kevin. You love um, you're a lover of the Holy Spirit, and you love to teach on that. Mm -hmm. And um, you've written a book on it that I've read, and uh, a lot of that you once wrote. Um, <laughs> well, while you were speaking on Sunday night at Blackpool, yeah. um, you once wrote, well, that's a different story of what you wrote. <laughs> yeah. I'll take it all another direction. Scripture in, and instead of being the encouraging scripture, it was, and she bled for 12 years and died. <laughs> I don't and she know died. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> just, uh, just tell us, Kevin, what, what are your passions regarding the Holy Spirit in the context of church and the life of believers? Well, my passion about the Holy Spirit is I just believe he's a, he's he's just been a neglected part of what we learn in church. We focus on getting forgiven. We focus on even knowing Jesus, which is awesome. And we focus on going to heaven. Some churches focus a lot on like, you know, a bunch of behavioral stuff like don't do this, don't do that. But when it comes to the Holy Spirit, a lot of people have a, a fear about the Holy Spirit because they have a lack of knowledge about the Holy Spirit. They have a lot of uh, misconcepts of the Holy Spirit. They have even the people that get into like weird Holy Spirit stuff. It's not because the Holy Spirit's weird. It's because they're weird and they decided to like make it weird. You know, so there's just, to me, we don't talk enough about this part of, of God, the, the person of the Godhead, the Holy Spirit. And the reason he's so important isn't, I mean, it's because inside of the Holy Spirit, is the power of God, that's the presence of God that we experience, mm -hmm. is all the gifts that God gives us to prosper and overcome and accomplish everything he's told us to do. So even if he's called you to be a business owner, a doctor, teacher, the Holy Spirit's not about a church service, having goosebumps in church service. Holy Spirit's like word of wisdom, word of knowledge. Like, do you think that could help you as a business person in a boardroom? To have God talk to you about that contract? To have God talk to you about people that are stealing money in the company, you know, to get God to give you a strategy to employ 400 people, you know, and we lean not, we're supposed to not lean on our own understanding, but acknowledge him. And here God has literally put his spirit inside of us to have conversations with us, to lead us, to guide us into all truth and, and to help us do and become everything Jesus yeah. died for us to become. He's the helper. That's what he's to help us do. Jesus paid for all of this freedom. He paid for all of this resource, all of this, you know, weaponry, all of these tools and the Holy Spirit then comes alongside of us to help us learn how to use it, you know, and, and because we don't talk about it, I think we live far lower uh, life quality than we, we should. It's not because Jesus didn't provide for it. It's not because it's not available. So we don't know how to access it. You know, even, even when it comes to personal holiness or it comes to the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, all those things, we try to produce it in our own self. We're like, oh, I got to love people more. I need to create more joy. And it's all back to like us again. And it's just, we have this partner in the Holy Spirit 
that we, we just very rarely talk to him. We very rarely take time to listen to him. We, we don't take time to understand him and his ways. He is God. He's not a part of God. He is God. You know, he's not a spirit from God. He is the spirit of God. And so it's like, just like you want to understand the father heart of God, or you want to understand God, the son, we should have that same level of respect and hunger to understand the person of the Holy Spirit. That's 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 brilliant, and uh, I know another thing that you're going to ask Maria about with uh, the some of the yeah, just, uh, Maria. I know we, Kevin touched on it then about your business, and you do something. Have I got this right? Is it body, soul, spirit? So that God loves all of us. He loves his, our bodies, our spirits, and our soul. And and you've got this life coaching business. Could you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah. So um. You know, it's interesting, you know, like you said, we're a triune being, right? We're spirit, soul, and body. So there's three parts of us that make up, you know, who we are. And I realized um, one time we were standing on stage at church and we were speaking and I looked at Kevin and I said, you know what, we as as leaders, we're pouring our life in ministry to help people um, become everything that God created them to be. You know, and we're, we're working on, we're focusing on spirit. We're focusing on soul through mm-hmm. teaching. But then I was looking at our, at our beautiful people and realizing, you know, we're telling them to go and fulfill the call of God on their life, but their bodies weren't going to be able to accomplish the task. Their mm-hmm. spirit might be ready. Their soul might be mostly ready, but their body was going to break down. And so there's things that we can control there and there's things that we can't control, but realizing, you know, as far as our physical well-being, but realizing that we're all three of those things come together to be everything that God created us to be. And so I realized um, through my own personal health journey that there's a physical health that um, a lot of times we neglect because we don't think, for whatever reason, we don't think it's very important to take care of us as moms. Yeah. Sometimes we will focus on taking care of our kids and our family, which is a good thing to do, but we often put ourselves last because we feel like that's the right thing to do, not realizing then it, it kind of affects how we are able to be the, the kind of mom that we want to be or wife that we want to be or whatever it is that we want to be. And so through my own personal health journey, realizing that when I got healthy and side result of that was losing um, a decent amount of weight. Um, but when I changed my habits and when I allowed transformation to take place in the inside of me, not only did my physical body change, but then so much more of my life began to change and God used it to bring me up higher, um, you know, in who he had created me to be. And so as far as the business goes, I love, um, I get to, you know, through, through our business, I get to help people a lot of start with health and start with transformation and start with, you know, stopping bad habits, but learning to build new healthy habits. Um, but it's a transformational process. And so it's been, a, even having the business has been a blessing for us. Um, but it's some, it's, it's so fun to watch people have breakthrough and to win and to see them get free. And so for me, it's missional and um, it's a ministry as well. Did you have anything you wanted to add to that? Yeah, you know, she was talking a second ago how a lot of times people will reach out and say, I, I want to lose weight. And, and, you know, they think that, you know, losing 30 pounds or 50 or 100 pounds, um, you know, that's all they think about is I just want to lose the weight. But they don't realize as they're changing on the outside, that journey they're on, if they'll go with the full journey and not just have a diet mentality, but say, I want to be a healthy person. Yeah. That all of a sudden they start addressing healthy mindsets and healthy lifestyle choices and healthy you know, other areas like mm. what are they reading? What are they, how are they treating other people? I want to be a better person overall. Um, it starts with the weight sometimes because that's their point. That's of, a pain, it's pain a point. Point of pain, yeah. yeah. It's, the, it's the most immediate. Yeah, but it's it's fun to watch because it really it's it's not about bad diets. Um, and I think that same thing with Christianity. It's not about a quick fix in Christianity. A, a person has to be ready to say, I'm ready to go on a journey. I'm ready to... Uh, Because there's going to be times you want to quit. There's going to be times um, you're frustrated. There's going to be times where you have to reach out. You don't feel like reaching out, but you're ready. Your brain, you're saying, I need to change. It's not just, oh, I need to go to church or, oh, I need to lose some weight. It's a healthy transformation. It's a spiritual transformation. And so for us, we felt like these are really congruent thought processes, The, 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 the spirit, soul, and body. They all go together. You know, we pray for so many sick people in church, but then they get healed and they go back right into the same unhealthy habits 
Yeah. You know, it's not that God doesn't have grace to heal them again, but his better will for them is to live in health. Live in health. Live in yeah, health. and to stop yeah. torturing their body and, and, and doing that. Same thing with finances, right? You give someone $10,000, but if they don't learn healthy habits of finance, they squander the 10000 they're back in the same place, you know, dead again. So it's all about transformation, not just the outward, but internal. So, uh, and I love having, um, finding the right system and the right things to help people do that is, has been key. And so honestly, just, I know that there's probably people even listening that are desperate for help and, um, that have changed or to desire change. And so just getting around the right group of people, having people keeping you accountable, but even letting yourself go on a journey, diving into some books, learning and having a good, even, you know, nutritional plan to help you do that. But taking it one step at a time. I like to say, I like to say, um, you know, what keeps us from having the diet mentality where it's like, you know, just go on a diet, but then you lose the weight and you go right back to your old habits. is just if you can focus on just building healthy habits, even one at a time, you know, just, you know, just kind of build up on that helps the transformation to keep it for the long haul, too. So. Just wanted to, anyway. Yeah, we could talk about health. I could, forever. I could talk about it for a long time. One of the things you put on your Insta, Maria, I think it was this week. You talked about embracing progress, but letting go of perfectionism. And just talk about that a little bit. That thought that you had that sometimes you can put be too hard on yourself if you, you know, you don't get it right all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So this has been a, a that's been a lesson that I've had to learn and embrace. Um, and recognize that I struggled with for a long time, but didn't realize, I'm just now realizing over the past year that I had struggled with it, um, is that idea of perfectionism. Mm -hmm. Um, And I had, I just realized that I'm a perfectionist, which I didn't really understand um, that I struggled with that because there are areas of my life that are not perfect, but I would put that pressure on myself. Mm -hmm. And I would feel that if I was not perfect, um, then something was inevitably flawed with me, that I was a bit, I was a failure. And so I dealt with shame and guilt from that. So just learning to come to the place where, you know what, I can never achieve perfection. The only person that's perfect is Jesus. Um, so it's, it's never going to be perfection isn't a destination for me because I can't ever get there. But if I can just begin to celebrate how God created me to be, and it doesn't mean you know, I would get scared to even allow myself the freedom to celebrate who God created me to be because I would I would think, well, then it's giving me license to not get better and to grow and to improve. I thought I struggled with that in my mindset. But again, it was a war and I realized it's not about that. I can embrace exactly who I am as long as I um, am hanging onto his hand and allowing him to grow me and to mm-hmm. and to move forward. And um, and there's a, so much more freedom in that when you can live in that place and give yourself grace, but even allow, for me, it's just been a journey to even allow myself to give myself grace that I'm not a perfect mom, um, that I didn't handle that situation right with my kids, but I'm even practically writing down in my journal things that I did well to retrain my thought process because I could tell you 15 things that I did wrong and struggle for five minutes to find one thing to tell you that I did well. Um, because of being a perfectionist and finding that, you know, I, I could never celebrate a victory because I always found something wrong somewhere. Um, so it's, it's a struggle because I know that God doesn't see me through that lens. Um, he doesn't put that pressure on me. I put that pressure on me. And what's the result of that? Well, it's negative self-talk. I get pulled back. I'm not moving forward. And I often shrink back from who God yeah. called me to be. So then again, and that negative self-talk, because then what happens if I put that shame and pressure on myself and I start to talk down about myself and talk Mm -hmm. negatively and that voice is that internal like um, critic will start to point out even more things that are wrong. And I'll try to motivate myself that way and just keep taking me in a circle. Um, So progress over perfection. I think that's brilliant, Maria. And I think so many people relate to that. And I think one of the things that God really spoke to me recently, actually, he just spoke to me and said, you know what, you're doing better than you think you are. And it, the, the release and the freedom in that, because we always think we're not doing as good as we should be. And when, when God says you, to you, you're doing better than you think you are, it's like a release and a freedom then to, to embrace the progress, but ditch the perfectionism, like you said, in, in your thing. 
Good, I'll let you speak now. Oh, <laughs> thank you, I'm still here. <laughs> I think uh, one of the things I... I, I mean, I, I'm like you, Kevin. We meet a lot of people in green rooms, in pastoral ministry. We, mm. you know, we meet pastors. And some of them, they're instantly forgettable um, because maybe that's not where we're at. But when I met you um, and we got to know each other, and particularly when you first came to King's that first time, one of the things I said to Georgina after mm. that I really like is how you tackled mm. what you were believing for, but you weren't yet seeing. And I, I'll never forget that Sunday morning, very powerful, when you first came to Kings, when you talked about God is a healer. And then you talked about Isaiah, and you talked about where he was at at the time. And and, I'm th- and I, I, I went home that, and I thought, that's the kind of guy that I like because he's not saying, woe is me, he's saying, but I still believe the Bible. I'm not going to dumb down the Bible because I've not experienced that in my family. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lift my expectation to say, one day I'm going to see my son totally healed. And, and you know, eat, whether that's a journey of getting there or instantaneous miracle, we don't really care. We yeah. just want, you know, God's will to be done in that situation, which is healing. And uh, I remember thinking, that guy's worth listening to. And, you know, you, the times you've been to Kings, you've always brought a great word. Um, you know, I, I rem- why? Because I remember them. I remember you preaching on Psalm 23 over at our Blackpool campus. And uh, so they're, 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 they're great. And I think another thing that's really great about you, and I don't want to, you know, this is not a mutual, you know, backslapping thing, but I don't think you realise how good you are. You're very humble. I mean, I'm very proud, but you're very <laughs> humble. And uh, and uh, I really like that about you. And, yeah. and as we've got to know each of those couples, and, you know, even you're the real deal in the times where we've had, where we've... Uh, We've just had fun times going around Warwick Castle and yeah. going around Paris together and all the fun times we've done outside of the ministry. Yeah. Um, we've been, we, you've been the same kind of people and we, we, we really love yeah, that. We do. And we really appreciate, we, we appreciate yeah. genuine people, don't we? We do, we love you guys. We, we have so much fun. Um, ministry, we love ministry and we're called to it and we love people, but sometimes it can be tiring and, and difficult and we, Derek and I really appreciate that appreciate that time that we have with you and those fun times of going around Chicago, whether it's a stately home in England, dressing up or wherever. And we've just had such and to be honest, that ministers to your soul as much as sometimes time in prayer and in the Word of God. Just those fun times with friends yeah. are just really important. I just love that that we can be ourselves together. We can share highs and lows and. Really appreciate you guys when we do get. To, I know it's not often enough, but and listen, yeah. Kevin. Since 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 you were last here, we've got two more campuses. Yes, yeah. so you know what we want. So listen, when are you guys going to come over to England again? Uh, let's make the quarantine is up. <laughs> listen, let's make a deal that 2021 sometime you're going to get over to England, see our new building. Yeah, absolutely, uh, we'll hopefully be in it then and ready. We're in it, but it's yeah. still a work in progress. Sure. Well, uh, yeah, we'd love you well, to come to 2021. We, were, we are there as soon as we can get there, absolutely. Um, just real quick, if for some reason uh, my visual goes out, we have 10% left on our <laughs> digital device, so I didn't want you to think I hung up on you. Well, listen, um, we're, we're going we're gonna to pull this together. Um, I, just we- to tell you, I just want to tell you both, though, we feel the same. Like, we have a, that same heart and love for you both as well. We feel you're genuine people. Derek, you know I reach out to you throughout the whole year for prayer, for con- counsel. It's not just, hey, let's preach together. Let's just have church and conferences. No. I genuinely value, we genuinely value your friendship as well. It's life-giving to us. So we just wanted to share the mutual the mutual love Very there. much so. We love you guys so much and respect you and your ministry and falling in love with mm-hmm. just both of you very much. So thank yeah. you yeah. for that. You've given us wise counsel. And you're great friends. Excellent, well, an excellent ministry. An excellent ministry, yeah. yeah. I was, I was in, the, I was in the garden today, and I burnt my Chicago Bulls hat, and I bought, <laughs> I bought an Orlando Magic. So we're yeah. on. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, well one listen, of these days you'll have to come. You'll this come way. this way. Last yeah. question. Last question. Um, what is the? I mean, you guys, are, lockdown is kind of lifting in Orlando about now, isn't it? So um, what's kind of the first thing you're going to do when lockdown's officially lifted? Well, we ate out. 
Oh, you've done it. Um, We've already gone out. We've gone out to the restaurants. That was, we didn't realize how much we enjoyed going out to eat until we weren't allowed to go out to eat. <laughs> <laughs> That's one thing. What else do we, uh, when Disney, Disney World opens, we'll go when back. When Disney yeah. opens, we'll be back. Uh -huh. Wow. We'll be there. Well, you'll you have your hair cut tomorrow. I'm jealous. I, no, I got my nails done. Georgina, oh, I got my nails done. I get my hair done tomorrow. Oh, I'm so jealous. We Don't need forget, we're only one hour. We're only one hour from the beach. Some of the best beaches of the world are one hour away. So. All right, do a rub it in. We like right. you. We'll we'll rub it. I had to. I had to throw it in. <laughs> I listen. I, just before we go, I was um, a few. It was about probably four or five weeks ago. I got up one morning. And um, I was just looking through my phone having breakfast. And Maria, you came on and you were in your running gear and it was pouring down. Yeah. And, and you just said, with the sun shining, I'm running the Disney 5K. <laughs> no, it wasn't on. No, it, it was cancelled. You were yeah. going to run the Disney 5K and it was cancelled. And I thought, what, what, you know, what is that? You're running the Disney 5K. The Star Wars and, theme. Oh, the Star Wars theme. Yes, and, yes. Oh. Yes. Listen, listen, we live in different worlds, and <laughs> we're so pleased you're you're in Orlando. And, oh, we uh, do we do love our campuses. Yeah, we do. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> we just love yeah. you, Dale Bolton. <laughs> I'll let, let, me, let no. This is the official last story, and then we'll pray. Um, but before we started Kings, this is absolutely genuine. Before we started Kings, um, and we left our last church in the, around the June, we started Kings uh, in November. There was a couple of options that we had, and I always had a strong sense to stay in Bolton and do what we're doing. I feel very called to Bolton and, and the Northwest, but we did North have East. a phone call um, and the Northeast. Yeah, and sorry, Kate said, and uh, we uh, we had a phone call from America from a church in Florida um, who'd heard we weren't doing anything and said, "Would you like you know to come for an informal interview? We'll fly you and your wife across and." So I'm thinking, well, listen, we get a free holiday out of this, even if we don't like the church. <laughs> and, uh, so I said, okay, let me think about it a, a, for a bit. And, and I went, to pray. you know, when you're praying, and you, you, you're praying, but you, you don't want to hear an answer because you want, <laughs> you pray thy will be done, but you don't mean it. You mean my will be done, God. And I'm thinking, God, all right, I don't want to do it. I'm called to both, but could I just get a holiday out of this? <laughs> so, so I remember ringing the next day and saying, look, you know, I really appreciate the time and everything, blah, blah, blah. But we, I don't feel I can come and, and do that because we're, we're called to put the phone down. And, you know, and we have, in all the phone, we have a real calling to, yeah. I think Bolton is the most beautiful place on the planet. Why? Because... It's just, it's just my Jerusalem. It's, it's. I feel like the mayor, mayor of the town. I feel like God put us here, and we've been ministering here. I've been ministering in Bolton for thirty-five years now, uh, in some kind of capacity, whether it's youth leader, assistant pastor, associate pastor, and then uh, it's fifteen years. This coming years, senior leader of Kings. So, listen, whatever context God gives you, whether it's Orlando in the sunshine or home bargains in the rain. God can bless you in whatever context yeah. you're in. Um, so, Kevin and Ray, thank you so much. And we're going to pray for you right now, and then we're going to let you go. Then we're just going to spend a couple of time um, with our campus for maybe a minute, just pray, just seeing if they're okay. Kevin, Maria, thank you so much. Say hi to yeah. the kids, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you in Bolton in our new building as soon as we can get you guys over here, okay? Let's pray. Right. Let's pray, Kings. Father, we thank you for Kevin and Maria and the yeah, children. Geez. We thank you for partners and friends in the gospel and we just pray for the blessing of God Amen. upon this next yeah. season of Kevin and Maria. We just pray that you'll take them to a whole different level in every aspect of their life, in their health, in their mindset, in their finances, in their ministry, yeah, for them, for their children, yeah. you'll give them opportunities that they could not have manipulated or even dreamt of. So yeah. thank you for them and we pray the blessing of Almighty God upon them in Jesus' name. In Jesus Amen. Name. Um, we love Kevin, you both. We love you all. And we'll see you really soon. Okay. Love you. Bye. Bye. You. Kings, you guys stay on. We're just going to spend a couple of minutes with you just to say hi. We're missing you so much. And uh, I'm, I'm, I mean, look at this. Look at that wow. hair. I've got more hair than Shaggy Dog. I've got a beard. I don't know what I'm going to. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. The first thing that happens after lockdown is I'm going to go to the Turkish Barbers on Berry Road and get Tarek to give me a good shave. <laughs> so listen, uh, we love you. Keep uh, yeah. plugged in. Stay in your connect groups. 
across all our campuses. Anything that campuses are doing, keep jumping online. Um, we're looking forward to. I'm looking forward to speaking on Sunday. Second part of the message on the Lost Boys, all about it, all the sun and some of the things yeah. parallels for our life. And uh, we're excited about what God is doing. We're working hard at getting. Um, us all ready back for when we can start to meet together in small groups. We're going to do it safely. We're not going to rush it. We're going to get it right. But we love you and we are missing you. Yeah. Remember that tomorrow is uh, prayer and fasting. So in the morning, there'll be some updates what we're praying and fasting on. But if you can give an hour, um, 10 minutes, miss one meal, what it is, whatever it is, we're not telling yeah. you what to do. We're just saying, look, if you could incorporate this into your day, across all campuses, that would be brilliant. So from me and Georgina, we love you. Hope you've enjoyed Table Talk tonight. We'll let you know during the week what we're doing next Thursday. There's loads of different options. We want to keep it live. We want to keep it helpful. And thank you for taking part and all the kind words that you've said um, uh, on, on Facebook Live tonight or whatever platform you are watching on. So from me and Georgina, God bless you. We love you. We will see you really soon. Bye. Bye, Kings. Bye.